So they kiss their dance and shake their bones And the politicians throw in stones Singing ashes, ashes all fall down Welcome to the 120-day Keto Carney Gapsivore-like Challenge 30-day update. I entitled this fasting because that's really what we're gonna talk about. If you remember from the challenge introduction, we were gonna begin with a five to seven day water fast and then move to boiled meat and broth for the last 30 days. Well, this amounted to be effectively a 30 day fast in a lot of ways. As you guys can imagine, there's no way I'm gonna be able to capture the enormity of the experience in the last 30 days. So I thought a lot about how to present this and what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce a series of topics that I won't be able to cover into any detail, but if you put them all in order, you'll start getting an idea about what my experience was like. So this section will be divided basically in four parts. First, I'll introduce the five stages of fasting and we'll get an idea of the physiological changes that I've gone through the past 30 days. Then we'll talk briefly about religious and spiritual fasting and aestheticism in general. And then I'll give you those couple lessons I learned from this experience. So these five stages of fasting were formalized by Dr. George Cahill of Harvard University. And it background information on this, the best source I know of on the internet is Jason Fung. And I won't step through all five stages, but we went through all five stages and then some. We see from Jason Fung's video that stage five of fasting begins basically greater than a week. So like I said, we went through all five of these stages and then we've spent the past three weeks in stage five. The one fasting topic that's worth pointing out that's a result of long extended fasting is autophagy. This is where your body recycles its cells. So in all the tissues of your body, your body starts taking the oldest cells and breaking them apart. It goes for the weakest cells first, the broken things, and it doesn't just break these things apart and, and, and flush them out or turn them into fuel. It'll disassemble a cell and, and if there's usable proteins, it'll reapply those proteins at other places. And I've been deep in this process for at least three weeks. I'm transitioning out where I am taking in daily caloric needs. And, we're, and in this stage five, we are in the protein sparing phase. Like I said, when we look at the days 31 to 60, you'll see how we're going to not only stop it, but reverse it and grow. Another fasting related topic worth mentioning is intermittent fasting. This is where people eat between four and eight hours during the day, and then they go 16 to 20 hours without eating. I don't even consider this fasting. I think this is better than fasting. I think this is just the natural, normal way humans eat. The intervals of this feeding and fasting might vary between individuals, even vary for an individual based on activity levels. But all indications is that this is just our normal eating pattern. An interesting variation of this practice is some are finding it useful to feed during a 12 hour period and fast for 36 hours. You might notice that 12 plus 36 equals 48. So while our circadian rhythm has us sleeping on a 24 hour interval, some find it useful to feed on a 48 hour interval. Fasting every other day is also known as the fast of David. Because some believe the prophet David ate in this way. And this is a perfect segue to say a few words about spiritual and religious fasting. I wanted to make a note about religious and spiritual fasting and aestheticism in general, because this is always an aspect. Any religion or spiritual practice that I've come across has some element of fasting. Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism. Siddhartha Gautama, he studied the religions of his time in India and he practiced all of them. And in doing so, he found that in aestheticism, there was a problem. If your spiritual height is tied to the diminishment of your body, then sooner or later, you're gonna to have to rebuild your body so that you can continue to do this, so you can stay on this earth. But when you do that, your spiritual level will come down. And so Siddhartha, he vowed to break this cycle. The cycle of aestheticism and rebuilding is a perfect illustration of karma. And so Siddhartha went and sat under the Bodhi tree and he vowed to sit there until he found a way. And this is where he found his enlightenment. And his enlightenment was that we exist through suffering. And all suffering, it comes from grasping. And there is a path to end grasping and to end suffering. 
That was the Buddha's enlightenment. In terms of our fasting, and we're supposed to be doing a nutrition and athletic series here, um, yeah, aestheticism is not the way. I'm, I do not recommend anything I do to anyone, but I certainly don't recommend what I've done if you're trying to prepare yourself for an athletic event. I have a long game. So I am, I am down to square one, and I'm gonna build from here, and I'm gonna build myself into a brand new man. Thank you for coming along with me. As I mentioned, there's no way I could capture this whole experience or tell you all the things I learned from this fast, but there's two points that I'll highlight. The first one is not new knowledge, but heavily reinforced, sleep. Sleep is paramount. I know this, I try. My issue with sleep is not that I can't fall asleep or I wake up in the middle of the night, it's time. I'm in the process of reclaiming my life, my emotional, my physical, and my financial health. But in terms of fasting, lack of sleep is deadly. Everything about the past 30 days was immensely more difficult because I did not get adequate sleep. This was an issue before I started the challenge, it's an issue now, but fasting, raises the stakes immensely. And of course, our whole point is to allow our body to heal. All of the significant healing and growth happens when we're asleep. I believe I got lots of benefit out of this experience, but my ability to heal on a daily basis is drastically impaired. The second thing is I vastly underestimated the impact of this fast. I thought I'd do a five to seven day water fast, spend two or three days getting myself back in the swing, eating boiled ruminant meat and broth, that I would just be able to take in as much as I need and get back up to speed. Boy, was I wrong. At first, I tried to break the fast too quickly. Then my body rejected. I had to slow down, ended up a couple more days of fasting. Then I started getting food in and things started going much better. But then once again, logistical issues, I go half a day without food and my body says, okay, we're fasting. I don't need any. So my appetite goes away. I try to eat some more. I get full after a few bites. I think ultimately my body is taking the course it needs. And regardless if I want it to happen sooner or later, it's going to happen when it happens. These are two of the main issues that became abundantly clear to me during these 30 days. All in all, it's come out great. I'm really happy I've done it. I'm really ready to move on. I'm ready to eat other food and I'm ready to start building my body back. So let's get on with it. Let's get on to the next 30 days.